I'm reading from Psalm 32 in the authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along in what we will be looking at today. Word for word, verse by verse. It's 926 a.m. Good morning to you, dear saints. Psalm 32. Joy. Joy. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Hmm. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Silla. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sins, Shelah. For this shall every one that is godly, and those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Hmm? For this shall every one that is godly, set apart, pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Alleluia. Alleluia. See, happy is fleeting, but joy is the anchor for the soul. Joy is our Lord Jesus Christ. Many can mimic and fake real joy, but genuine, true joy that is within the saints of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Church of the Living God, <laughs> What is it? Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Shelah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding. And you read about the horse in the book of Job, how he, he laugh at, uh, at the shaking of the spear. Ha ha! Mm. And the mule, one of the most stubborn, pompous creatures you will ever come across. Yeah. Which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord. And there's a difference between glad and happy. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice ye righteous, dear saints, and shout for joy. All ye that are upright in heart, in heart, shout for joy. Why are why can we, as the church of the living, living God, shout for joy? Very simple. Thou art my hiding place. And blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. In the previous video, we looked into happy. What it is to be happy, how happy is defined according to scripture. Okay? And the word happy only appears 28, 29 times within scripture. The word joy and the variations thereof appears well over 200 times. Uh, we're not going to go through all of them, but we are going to see today, Lord willing, Lord willing, the vast differences between what is happy and joy. And again, people like to confuse and blend the two together. Like we said in the previous video, you can be happy 
and have no joy. Why? Why? Thou art my hiding place. And blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Okay? You can have joy. You can have joy knowing that thou art my hiding place. But as the church of the living God, I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Shelah. You can be one of the church of the living God and have joy, but have no happiness. Why? Because there's sin in your life. You're not doing as according to what he says. Hence, how are you going to be happy? You might have joy, but you will not have happiness if you are in sin. Then again, what does the world tell you? You can be happy. It's all about happy. And they confuse happy and joy. No. Happy, we can be happy in the Lord's provision. Whether it's the fruit of the womb, whether it's provision for necessity, whether it's provision of fellowship. Okay? But we can also be happy in service. Okay, but see, true happiness is derived from what? Joy. And having joy, having joy is what? <laughs> Thou art my hiding place. Who is our hiding place? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Our God, our Lord, and our King. I know a lot of people like to shun from that. It's like, oh, because... We're not building a kingdom down here, we as of the Church of the Living God. <laughs> there are some, uh, <laughs> some out there who are trying to build a kingdom other than Catholics, yes, yeah. <laughs> but we of the Church of the Living God, we're not building a kingdom down here, okay? There are those out there who claim to be of the Church of the Living God who are trying to build their, themselves a kingdom, yes. But those of us saints of the Lord, this is not, we're not building the kingdom. But nonetheless, nonetheless, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who is our Lord, our God, and our King. Hmm. And with that, let's get into this. Let's dive right into joy. Now, happy like we said in the previous video, I'll link it in the description box, is associated with what the Lord gives and his usefulness of those, his saints, okay? We could be happy in his provision, but happiness unto us of the church of the living God is derived first and foremost from the joy of the Lord. Be glad in the Lord, verse 11 in Psalm 32, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. What is joy in, in accordance to Scripture? Let's look at this. Now, I'm going to do something a little different. Today, it's just the Lord, you and I, talking about this. This whole thing, this, this whole video, is going to be done today. This will probably be two parts, so the total videos addressing this subject, these subjects will be in total three. Um, this will probably be two parts, speaking about joy. The one, this part, of speaking about uh, in the Old Testament, will be uploaded today. And Lord willing, we'll see how this goes. The one with the New Testament will be uploaded tomorrow. Okay? We'll see how that goes. But... Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and go with me as I had said, word for word, verse by verse, what we are looking at. Now, the first appearance of any variation of the word joy first appears in the Torah. Now, I had said unto a brother before deeply looking into this that the word joy does not appear in the Torah or the first five books of Moses. Um, a variation of the word joy does. The first reference of the singular use of joy appears in 2 Samuel, which we will get to. But the very first appearance of any 
a variation of the word joy, first appears in Deuteronomy chapter 28. So, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 45 on to verse 48, okay? And we are going to see where joy, not happy, where joy is to be centered on and what joy is to be and where it is to be, okay? And what is the source? What is the true source of our joy? Now, you can be happy. You can have aspects of joy within happy. And same thing, okay? You can have joy with aspects of happy, absolutely. But they are two different things, even though they circle around one and of the same, but in and of themselves, they are different. But for us, of the Church of the Living God, they stem from the same source. And what is that? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 45 on to verse 48. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Why? Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Dispensation under the law, written unto the Jews, predicated on obedience, okay? Okay, yes, but we are learning something. We are being instructed today. Let's keep reading. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Now look at that verse. Because thou servest not the Lord, Lord thy God with joyfulness, joyfulness, that they, what were they joyful in? What were they supposed to be joyful in? The Lord their God, okay? And with gladness of heart, gladness is not happy, nor is happy gladness, okay? There are aspects of both within the other, yes, but things that are different are not the same, okay? And with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So, in order to enjoy the abundance of all things, first requires what? Joy, joyfulness in who and what? Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Hmm. Hmm. So we see here joyfulness in verse 47 being associated with what? The abundance of all things. But first starts with joyfulness. Joy. What were they being joyful in? Supposed to be joyful in. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verses 4 under verse 15. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Everything of you. Not just what you select to give him on any given day, but the whole fabric of who you are is supposed to what? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Now, can we do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week? No. No, we can't. But, but, we are to put God first in all things. He is our joy. He is our strength. Okay? Absolutely. How many people claim that they love the Lord their God with all their heart and with all their soul and with all their might, but yet they go down into the pit and they're surrounded by the mire? Ooh, boy. Mm. 
Let's continue. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them, teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou, thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Incidentally, uh, you might have seen some Jews who wear a little box on their forehead, right? You might have seen that. They, they take that away from this verse right there as frontlets between their eyes. They put that thing on their head, okay? And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And when I used to work for um, uh, a Jew in Bull Valley, he did that very, he had it on the doorposts in his house. Absolutely. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. Hmm. So we, so we as the church of the living God, we have inherited things that we have not labored for. But whom? The Lord has labored for them. Absolutely. The Lord has done all things for us. It is finished. Okay? Hence, we, this, this crosses dispensational lines, by the way. Okay? We as a church of the living God, as saints, we are to do that. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Okay? And to love thy neighbor as thyself. Let's continue. And houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells dig which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, <laughs> lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Beware, lest you become self-sufficient, dependent on your own trickery, upon your own manipulations, upon your own cunning, upon your own speaking. Beware, lest you be wise in your own conceits. Oh, think of quite a few people who are wise in their own conceits and depend on themselves. All the while saying that they're Christ dependent. Really. Sure could have fooled me. Hmm. Then beware. Lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And see, what we looked at in uh, Deuteronomy 28 verses 45 on verse 48 is because what? They were high favored, well favored. And in verses, uh, chapters 32 and 33, which we address in the previous video about Jeshurun, hmm? well-favored, well-favored, and they become fat and happy. Yes, and they grow fat and wax thick and they kick. Yes, why? Because they become self-sufficient. And happiness is confused with joy and they confuse it with the mere things and not the one, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, himself. Okay? Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods. Little G there, obviously. Now, of the gods of the people which are round about you. Now, in context, talking about the little statutes. Yes, absolutely. Pagan gods. But then again, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hmm? <laughs> ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. And remember, remember what Satan said unto Eve about ye shall be as gods. Knowing good and evil. Hmm? Again, beware of going after men. Please beware of that. 
For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. And in Deuteronomy chapter 28, okay, we see that. And the reference is made onto joyfulness, okay? For all things that he gave, okay? You could be happy in what he has given, but see, that happiness is derived from what? The joy of the Lord, that you are his chosen people, chosen today in this uh, dispensation because you came to him on his terms, the way of the cross, and not your own. You're not a, a thief and a liar. Go up some other way. You know, the, you boot the door out of the way. Okay, so, but see, here in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, okay, what happened? Verses 45 on to verse 48. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Why? Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he command thee, commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. Their joy was to be in the Lord. Not to confuse joy with being happy and with what he gives. See, so many are doing that. They're confusing the two and they're different. Very different. Okay? Okay? So many of these people have joy in the things of the world and the things that pertain onto the world, the things of like their stuff. But who is giving them that stuff? That's the question. And where in that is your joy? That's the question. Okay? Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And Paul talks about um, that these people will be given over. Because why? Because they receive not the love of the truth. God shall send them strong delusion, putting the yoke upon their neck. Why? Because their joy is in stuff. Not in the one who provides all things himself. Okay? Now, go to 1 Samuel chapter 12. Okay? So, right away. Right away. Joy is associated with what? With what? Joyfulness and what? Serving the Lord. Okay? Why is that? 1 Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter 12. Another rebuke in a way here. But it's very telling. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 8 on to verse 15. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 8 on to verse 15. When Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers cried unto the Lord, then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt and made them dwell in this place. And when they forgot, forget the Lord their God, he sold them into the hands of Sisera, captain of the host of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab. And they fought against them. And they cried unto the Lord and said, We have sinned, because we have forsaken the Lord, and have served Baalim and Ashtaroth. But now deliver us out of the hand of our enemies, and we will serve thee. And the Lord sent Jerabel, and Bedan, and Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and ye dwelled safe. And when ye saw that Nash, Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us, when the Lord your God was your king. So joy to serve the Lord, joy in the Lord who is our God, our Father, and also our King. Our Lord, our God, our Father, also our King. Hmm. Hmm. There are those who will dispute that. So he's not the King of the Gentiles. He is the King of the Jews, but we are grafted into his tree 
into the tree of the Jew, does that not make him our king too? And does he hath not, doth he not have right to tell us what to do as Lord, God, Father, and King? Hmm? Absolutely he does. Let's keep reading. Now therefore, behold, the king whom ye have chosen and whom ye have desired. And behold, the Lord has set a king over you. The Lord set the king over them because they wanted to see a physical representation. Okay? They wanted to see. And today we walk by faith, not by sight. But remember, the Jews require the sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Remember that. Okay? If ye will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord. Uh, let me read that again. If ye will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. But if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, as it was against your fathers. So being joyous, joyful, is to be what? To be joyful in our King, our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, in Him, okay? In him. Joy is associated with what? Joying in a king. Hmm. And who is our king? Hmm? Hmm? And of course, Deuteronomy chapter 17, a reference here about the setting of a king over them. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 20. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are that are about me. See, our Lord originally did not intend for that to happen, but he knew that it was going to happen, and hence to bring in that line of David, which our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, would come from, Okay line of the king of David, son of David, you know. Okay, let's continue. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee. Number one, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Okay? One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. And as a recompense unto them, as a judgment against them, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, Cyrus, Rome, Rome to this day, yeah, okay. But he shall not, and this kind of stuff here, but he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, kind of like what Solomon did, to the end that he should multiply horses, for as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, like Solomon did, that his heart turn not away, like Solomon did. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Hmm. And who is the one who gave him the riches? Solomon, the riches. It was the Lord. Hmm. And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write to him a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment, to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom." He and his children in the midst of Israel. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Now go to Isaiah chapter 33. So joy is associated with what? A king. 
And we're, we're going to see that here coming up as well, okay? And who is our king? He is our king. We are not building a kingdom today. We are not. The church of the living God, we are not building a kingdom today. Christians out there, yeah, they are building a kingdom. But we, the church of the living God, we're not building a kingdom today. No, but nonetheless, is not our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is he not also our king? Hmm? You might be saying lordship salvation. Um, lordship salvation teaches you, you give up X, Y, Z in order to get A, B, C. Okay? That's what lordship salvation is generally defined as. Um, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, uh, guess what there, Jack? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, he is your Lord. He is your God. He is your Father. He is also your King. And in the kingdom of heaven, who do you think we're going to serve? Okay? Now, Isaiah chapter 33, tie-ins here. Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33, verses 20 on to verse 22. Look upon Zion, the city of our solemnities. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams, wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ships ship, nor neither shall gallant ship pass thereby. Beg your pardon. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. Written on to the Jews, absolutely, absolutely, yes. But see there again. Jesus Christ is our Lord. He is our God. He is our Father. He is also our King. He is the King of the Jews. I'm not a Jew. You're not a Jew. If you're, you know, you're not of uh, that uh, line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the chosen line of the Hebrew, uh, you're not a Jew. But yet we are grafted into the tree of the Jew. Hence, we serve our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our King. Okay? He is, whether we like to admit that or not. And most of the times, unfortunately, we do not act as if he is, do, don't we? <laughs> and now go back to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 22. Behold, the heaven. And the heaven of heavens is the Lord's, thy God, the earth also with all that therein is. Only the Lord had to delight in thy fathers to love them. The fathers he's talking about is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Yes, God is a God who chooses, okay? Yes, yes. He chooses you. Not, not Calvinism, thank you, devil. No, not Calvinism. But yes, it is an issue of the heart. Yes, it is. God does know your heart. Yes, he does. And he knows whether you come to him sincerely broken, sincerely contrite, and have true fear of him and call upon his name. He is the judge. He is our lawgiver, okay? He is our king. You're going to stand before him to give an account of yourself. Okay? Only that the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty, and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. 
He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Okay? Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Don't forget from whence ye came. I, I, I truly believe that so many of you, myself included, that we need to never forget where from whence we came. We don't dwell on it, but you don't forget from whence you came. And see, when people forget from whence they came, they become elevated. They become self-sufficient. Okay? For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and the widow, and loveth the stranger, and giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Okay? <clears throat> thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, thou shalt serve him, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave, and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God, that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with three score and ten persons, and now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. Okay? So, again, our focus, like I constantly like to remind you, is to be on our Lord Jesus Christ God, our Father. He is our joy. He is our praise. Okay? And without the joy of the Lord within you, what the happiness that any of you can have it's going to be vain, it's going to be nothing, okay? Nothing. You can be happy and have no joy. You can have joy and have no happiness. Why? Because you're out of fellowship. Hmm? Hmm? Okay? First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, we want verses 13 on to verse 16. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things, make alive, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, the King of kings, Lord of lords, before who? Oh, someone who was set over the children of Israel as a judgment against them, Pontius Pilate. Isn't that something? That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall shew, who is the blessed and only, capital P, potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Like I said, the irony of him standing before Pilate. God, the Father. God, the creator of heaven and earth. Standing before a man, a mere man. Who is king, ruler, if you will not have king, but ruler over his people because of judgment. And there Jesus Christ himself was before Pontius Pilate. Wow, huh? Who only, verse 16, who only hath immortality, dwelling in, the, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Okay? And of course, I think you reckon we had to go to here. Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 under verse 16. This is the second coming at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. And we, the Church of the Living God, if you get redeemed, caught up, 
You're coming back with him here. Okay? And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was di and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the capital W Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's us. That's us. Okay. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? So joy is associated with what? Second Samuel chapter 19. Very first appearance now of the singular uh, singular use of the word joy. 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18. Beg your pardon, brethren. Excuse me for that, brethren. I had a big sneeze. Before we get to 1 Samuel 18, go to 2 Samuel 19, okay? 2 Samuel 19. Can't forget this. 2 Samuel 19, okay? Jesus Christ is King of kings, Lord of lords. Joy is associated with what? To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, okay? We are to be joyful in God for who he is, not merely with what he gives. Yes, praise the Lord. He has given us salvation. Praise the Lord. He has given us himself but do you not love him first and foremost for who he is? Okay? Good example of this. 2 Samuel 19, verses 24 on to verse 30. Talking about Mephibosheth. Okay? If, if you want to read a little bit on Mephibosheth, read 2 Samuel chapter 9 sometime. And that's a really good picture of God's grace. Okay? Very good picture of it. But... This is when King David got ousted from his kingdom by his own son, okay? And Shimei and all that threw rocks at him, cast stones at him and whatnot. And Ziba lied to King David and tricked Mephibosheth, okay? And this is on the return when King David, you know, uh, his men killed uh, uh, um, uh, Absalom and whatnot. And this is on the return, okay? So... We are going to be reading verses 24 on to verse 30, okay? Here, here is a good picture of what it is to have joy in the Lord, okay? Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, okay? 2 Samuel 19, verses 24 on to verse 30. And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, and had neither dressed his feet nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes, from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. And it came to pass when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest not thou with me, Mephibosheth? It's like, hey, you know, you ate bread at my table. I, do, I gave you grace. Why, why didn't you come with me? Right here. And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass, that I may ride thereon, and go to the king, because thy servant is lame. And he hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. But my lord the king is as an angel of God. Do therefore, now get this, do therefore what is good in thine eyes. For all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table. 
Yes, yes, like I said, read Second Samuel chapter 9. Get the whole meaning of this uh, on your own time, okay? But yes, Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, okay, was shown grace because of the covenant that he made, that David made with Jonathan, okay? And yes, Mephibosheth ate bread at his table. Yes, he was happy. But see, then this happened, okay? And Mephibosheth is saying that. It's like, yes, for all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table. And you bet he was happy, amen. What right have I? What right, therefore, have I yet to cry any more unto the king? Aha. Aha. Right there. See, Mephibosheth, though he was happy that he ate bread at the king's table, but yet, but yet, he didn't, remember, he didn't forget from whence he came. And the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said, Thou and Ziba divide the land. Look at this. Here's a good picture of joy. And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all. Wait a minute. He, he had, he had a, a part of King Saul's land allotted to him for Jonathan's sake. He ate at King David's table. But yet, in all the light of this, he's like, Hey, take it all. That stuff doesn't matter to me as much as, Yea, let him take all for as much as my Lord, the King, is come again in peace unto his own house. Aha. What is that? That's joy. That, verse 30, right there. That's joy, buddy. Take, take away all of this. Take it away from me. So long you, as you, Lord, are glorified. So long as... You, Lord, are praised. That's a, I'll tell you what there, brother, sister, uh, dear saints. If there, if there is any a picture of what joy actually is exhibited, verse 30 right there. Verse 30 right there. And Mephibosheth said unto, and Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all. Okay? He didn't put overdue stock in the blessing as much as the one who gave him that blessing. Do you see? Okay. John chapter 6. Let's drive this home. Let's beat this horse a little, okay? John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Okay? Verses 22. Woo! On to verse 29. I love this stuff. Luke, uh, John chapter 6. Did I say Luke? Excuse me. John chapter 6, verses 22 on to verse 29. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one wherein his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they, say, they said unto him, Rabbi, Rabbi, not son of David, not Lord, my God, no, but Rabbi. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Oh, yeah. When camest thou hither? L look at this, look at this. Verses 26 and 27. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, Verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, not because of who I actually am, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled, because your God is your belly. 
Labor not for the meat which perisheth. Most things that we can be happy in down here in this life are fleeting. Okay? If they come with the Lord, they are certainly, certainly not a vain because the labor that you do in the Lord is not in vain. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah. But the provision, when you're dead, what's going to matter? Huh? Like my best friend says, it's like, you know, when I'm dead, in reality, I, yeah, he, he's going to be buried. I'm going to be buried and whatnot. But it's like, what gets done with this carcass? I'm going to be with the Lord. <laughs> you know? But, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that which, for, but for that meat which endureth on to everlasting life. And your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Remember that. And remember, the things that we do for the Lord are attributed unto us uh, in rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. You know, the hay and the stubble, the stones and gold and silver and that stuff. Stuff that can abide the fire, stuff like that. And see, that is not why we serve the Lord. If you are serving the Lord just for mere reward, Who is Jesus to you then? Who is he to you? If you are seeing and serving him just for the benefit of reward. What if no reward came to you? Could you still love the Lord and enjoy in your king, your God, your Lord and Father? Hmm? Hmm? What if you were called to just sit there? Hmm? Just say it. King James, Bible-believing Christian, do you really know who God is? And do you love God as God? Or is he just the one who succors you in your needs? And is that as deep as you go? I often wonder. I often wonder. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give you, give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, offering the kingdom unto the Jews. Yes, dispensational difference. Verses 26 and 27, though. Cross dispensation lines. You shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Or you say that you love the Lord. What happens if you have to be in Bethlehem and squalor? I wonder. I wonder about so many of you. I really do. I really do. Now, let's go to 1 Samuel. Now go to 1 Samuel chapter 18, the very first singular, uh, very first appearance of the singular reference of the word joy is right here in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 18. And look what it's associated with. Okay? You might be saying, well, Brad, why did we go through all that? You're seeing what joy is truly to be associated with. A king. What king are you? What God are you serving, huh? Who is your king? Satan? Mammon? Huh? Prestige? Honor of men? First <laughs> uh, Samuel chapter 18, verses 5 on to verse 9. And this, of course, is after when the kingdom was taken away from Saul because of his disobedience. You can read about that in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 10 on to verse 28. Read that on your own time, okay? This is after, okay? David was anointed king, but just didn't arrive as king yet. Interesting parallel. King Saul, who loved 
the things that be of men, but not the things that be of God. And here King David was in the balance waiting to receive his kingdom. Isn't that a striking thing, huh? 1 Samuel 18, verses 5 on verse 9. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music, with a K. Love that. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Now they mentioned Saul first, who was the legitimate anointed king. Yes, he was. Okay. But then they say, and David his ten thousands. Okay. And look at Saul's reaction. Guilty conscience, okay? Uh, you see this demonstrated in a lot of these phonies and a lot of infiltrators, okay? And Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. Ooh, guilty conscience. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands. And to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. Hmm. Look at verse 6 again. Did you catch it? And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, David is mentioned first there, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul. Okay. Okay with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music with a K. So, dancing, with tabrets, uh, with tabrets, okay? Singing, dancing, to meet King Saul. So, there again we see joy associated with a king. And who is our King, Church of the Living God. I know a lot of you might be uncomfortable with that, but the fact is, Jesus Christ is our Lord, our God, our Father, and our King. Who do you think you're going to be serving during the kingdom of heaven? Okay? Is his king on earth today right now? No. No. Satan's kingdom is what is being established today through Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit orders. Men's petty little kingdoms with their court gestures, they are being established. The petty kingdoms of men. But we of the Church of the Living God, we are not establishing a kingdom today. See, men like John MacArthur and uh, what's his name, Washer, okay, those guys are all about kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. The only kingdom that is being established today is that kingdom of the man, that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? Which is going to be established for judgment upon this world and upon the Jew, okay? And then it's very disturbing when you see men establishing their own little kingdoms. Where did you get your example from? I wonder. I wonder. Hmm. But, Joy again, associated with a king. Mm. Joy, king. King, joy. Mm. First Kings, chapter 1. First Kings, chapter 1. First Kings, chapter 1, verses 37 on to verse 40. As the Lord hath been with my Lord the king, even so be he with Solomon. And make his throne greater than the throne of my lord, King David. So Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Carathites, 
and the Pelethites went down and caused Solomon to ride upon King David's mule and brought him to Gihon. And Zadok the priest took an horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon, and they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, God save King Solomon. And all the people, pay attention, came up after him, and the people piped with pipes and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth rent with the sound of them. So again, joy associated with what? A king. Okay? See, this is why it's very dangerous to confuse happiness with joy and vice versa. There are aspects of joy within happiness. There is aspects of happiness within joy. Yes, but they are two things that ought to be centered around the same one who is our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, our Lord, our God, and our King. Okay? Happy to be happy in what he gives, his provision, his favor, yes, but joy, just like Mephibosheth. It's like, hey, take all. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God you are, what, what, what is that again? Go to, um, go to 2 Samuel uh, chapter 2, verse 19 again, okay? Check that out. Let's go there again. That That's really good right there. 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 30, right there. Great picture of joy. And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all, for as much as my lord the king is come again in peace unto his house. And amen. When our lord king, our God, our father, Jesus Christ, is to come again in peace to his house in Jerusalem at the end of Jacob's trouble, when he come back as Mephibosheth, the Jews are going to be saying that. As are we. Amen? Okay? Now, go to 1 Chronicles chapter 12. 1 Chronicles chapter 12. 1 Chronicles chapter 12. So that line of David, that line of David, Jesus Christ is the son of David, meaning in the lineage of his kingship. Okay? Not physically. Okay, the physical skin suit, the body that the word was made flesh. Okay, that is derived of Mary, which genealogy is in Luke. Okay, okay, she physically descended of David. Yes, yes, okay, but Joseph was not the father. <laughs> okay, Joseph wasn't his daddy. Okay, Jews today, Jesus ben Joseph, or as they like to say, uh, Yeshua ben Yosef. You can correct me on that later, brother. Okay, <laughs> but First Chronicles chapter twelve, verse uh, right to start, just one verse to start, verse twenty-three. Okay, remember Mephibosheth. Hey, praise the Lord. Okay, that you are, uh, you know, take everything. At least you are returned to your kingdom in peace. Okay? Verse 23. And these are the numbers of the bands that were ready armed to the war and came to David to Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. And let's skip to verses 38 and on to verse 40. All these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. And we as the church of the living God, we are ambassadors for Christ, having the word of reconciliation and ministry of reconciliation. We are out there preaching Christ and him crucified. Okay? Verse 39. And there they were, and there they were with David three days, eating and drinking, for their brethren had prepared for them. Moreover, they that were nigh them, even unto Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, 
brought bed, bread on asses and on camels and on mules and on oxen and meat, meal, cakes of figs and bunches of raisins and wine and oil and oxen and sheep abundantly for there was joy in Israel. Joy in Israel. Why? Because David is their king. You get it? Do you get it? I know you do. That's that's pretty simple, isn't it? That's pretty simple, isn't it? Now, First Chronicles chapter twenty-eight. Check this out. First Chronicles chapter twenty-eight. This is why you want to read the Old Testament, brother. First Chronicles chapter twenty-eight, verses two under verse eight. Then David the king stood upon up upon his feet and said. Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build a house of rest for rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me. God is a God who chooses. Before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler. And is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah? I remember the prophecy, what was that? Um, that Joseph spake, or was it Moses? I can't remember offhand. Where that there shall not cease to be a lawgiver come out from betwixt his feet. Speaking of Judah, making reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. David is king. His kingdom, his throne is promised unto him, and that promised fulfillment is in who? Jesus Christ, the son of David. Okay? Joy in a king. Joy in our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Now, go to Psalms. Psalm 5. Psalm 5. Okay? So, joy. Joy. There are things you can joy in, but joy begins first in the beginning. God. Okay? If you're not saved... And the Lord does not dwell within you, because if the Lord doesn't dwell within you, that seal, you're not saved. Your joy is in what? Your joy is derived from what? Your flesh? The devil? And you mistake the things of the world for joy and happiness. You blend them together. They're different things, my dear friend. They are different things. Okay? Joy scripturally. Is derived from the Lord. Being of the Lord. Being sealed in him. Being of his house. That's joy. So many can fake it. But true joy. You know, what the Lord has put in, we are to work out. See, Flippantly, people can imitate joy with happiness. But like Mephibosheth, 
Let him have all. Just praise you that you are glorified. Can you say that, man? Take everything so long as you are glorified. I don't care about me so long as you are glorified. It's really simple, isn't it? But see, with what is coming, with what is being pushed, financial collapse, inevitable. Okay? Many of us, many of you, many of us, will find out where our joy truly is. I've made me uh, reference before of a millionaire Christian who I know if everything was taken away from him, his millions in Swiss, you know, in a Swiss bank account or whatever it is, his joy is in mammon, not in the Lord. Not in the Lord. Be devastated, crushed. Gives new meaning to the, the saying, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Psalm 5, verses 8, on to verse 12. Now look at this. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Watch how you behave yourself. Especially when a lot of eyes are looking at you. You're being watched, dear brother, dear sister. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. True. What are they faithful unto? O oh, man. Onto an idea? Hmm? Onto a religion? Onto a petty kingdom? Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. For they have rebelled against thee. Cast them out. Cast them out. Oh, oh, we got to make this reference here. Got to make this reference. Uh, 1 John chapter 2. Come on, you know where we're going, don't you? 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. Oh, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us so they could make themselves their own little kingdom on earth. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. For they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. <laughs> because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. <laughs> Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Yea, let him have it all. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I, I love the Lord for who he is. Yes, praise the Lord for his grace, for his mercy, for his salvation, for his gifts unto men. Amen. Hallelujah. But who he is, who he is in and of himself, that's what we need to focus on, brethren. Because how many are making you focus on the external? But inside, yeah, you're full of dead men's bones. Dead! But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. Because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, right there. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. <laughs> you, you know, he, you deny him, he'll deny us. Benefits, okay? The stuff that so many of us, so many of you, 
we take for granted. So many of us, me too, okay? Loving God for who he is, not just what he gives. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you watch, okay? As things are escalating downward, okay? I know, escalating downward, I know, I get it, okay? But as they are going downward, this thing of focusing on being blessed rather than focusing on the Lord is going to be what these Christians, well, they're already doing it, but those of uh, a lot of who people look to, it's going to be on the, the worldly stuff, not on him as he is. You watch, you watch, you watch, you watch. Mark my words, dear saints, you mark my words. These people, they're gonna make they're gonna turn all the, the attention and affections onto the things that affect their living and their well-being, and all the while not holding the head. You watch. Not loving God for who he actually is. Psalm 30. Psalm 30. Yeah, that 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 you know. I've only been saved going on now, what, uh, 15? Wow. 14, 15 years now? For 2008, okay? <laughs> and you know what? I see in a lot of Christians how I don't want to be the longer I walk with our Lord. I see a good example. Thank you for your example, by the way, there, Hotshot. Thank you very much. I see how I don't want to be. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. I want to love the Lord for who he is, not just what he does for me. Even though what he does for us, for us of the church of the living God, uh, is our salvation. Amen. But do you love him for who he is? And who is he to you? Psalm 30. Again, we're going to read the whole psalm. I hope you can handle that, okay? I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Now look at what is being addressed there, okay? Okay, things of livelihood. But sing unto the Lord, O ye saints, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Holiness, separate, other than that. Okay, so see, verses 1 on verse 3. Okay, soul alive from the grave. You don't let the foes rejoice over you. Healing, okay? Those are things pertaining unto this life. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness, that he is other than. <laughs> How many of y'all make a God of your own making and, and, and think he's just like you? You're worshiping flesh? That's exactly what you're doing. You're making him in your own image. Okay? You think he's a he, you think he's just like you. At the remembrance of his holiness, other people. Is, is this so hard to get? Is it? For his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor, his life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And on that, of course, hold your place here. Joy cometh in the morning. Okay? We can have joy in that we are his children. And that he, we can have joy that we belong to him first, but be happy in that he corrects us. Job chapter 5, verse 17. Now you got to remember the context of what this is being said in. But this truth, these guys spake truth unto Job. 
but in a pretense of an accusation. Okay? Okay? They speak truth, but in the wrong pretense. Okay? In the wrong context. Okay? But Job 5, verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Okay? Happy. Happy that he corrected you. It's like, well, man, I got, got the nearly the flesh torn off my hide. You want me to be happy in that? In re retrospect, beloved. See, you joy that, number one, you're his and you belong to him. You joy in that first. And then, in retrospect, you look back. It's like, wow, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for not giving me that. Or thank you, Lord, for whooping me the way you did. Okay? You have joy first that you belong unto the Lord and yet can be happy in that correction, okay? And uh, on that, uh, also now in Job, like I've, I've already mentioned, Job 13, verse 15, okay? Job 13, verse 15, not 15, 13, Brad, I always do that. Job 13, verse 15, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him, Okay? Now, let's make it clear, okay? Happy is the man whom God correcteth. Yes, okay? Why can you be happy in that correction? Because you have joy that you are his. See, you can be happy in that correction, which stems first from the joy that you belong to the Lord, that he is your God, your Father, your Lord, your King. Do you get it? Okay? Okay? This is actually very simple. It's these Christians out there who blend these two together. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Just like Catholicism. Blend everything together. When God is a God of boop, distinction. I'm all about distinction. How about you? Oh, distinct unto your ruler, huh? Yeah, yeah. Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to be hitting Hebrews a couple times here today. Hebrew, not Peter, Brad. Hebrews chapter 12. Come on, fingers, work with me. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, verses 7 on to verse 11. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. So stop right there. Happy is the man whom the Lord correcteth. Okay. Happy is the man that whom the Lord correcteth. Therefore, endure the chastening of the Lord. Just Brad eyes that, excuse me. But, see, we could be happy that he's correcting us because why? He is our father. Starts with joy. Joy first. That comes, that happiness and correction. Okay? How many of you, like I said, man, how many of you looking back, oh, wow, Lord, thank you for keeping me from that. Or, wow, Lord, thank you that you allowed that. I'm happy that you did that. I joy in you, my Father, for correcting me. See, that's how it works. Okay? That's how it works. Check this out. Okay? Okay, where did we start off here? Uh, verse 7. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Don't know who your true father is. Fortunately, some of you do know who your true father is, and your father is Satan. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Partakers of his holiness? Be joyful in God at the remembrance of his holiness, other. Okay? We love him that he is holy, other. 
Not like me, not like you, praise the Lord. Not like man, even though Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, yet not like us. I know that's really hard for you to get, isn't it? Some of you, isn't it? But it's really simple. If you're saved. Okay? That we might be partakers of his holiness. I love the Lord because he's holy. He's, he's nothing like me. He's other than anything. Do you love him for who he is? Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. Oh God, why are you whipping me? Some of you do know why. But joyous is, doesn't seem to be joyous. Meaning, it doesn't seem like your father loves you. How many of you got, when you were a kid, you got the whooping? And you felt like your mother or father didn't uh, love you? That's what it's talking about. Okay? Okay? He disciplines his own. He hands over to judgment by Satan uh, in this world to those who are not his own. Okay? So, yes. Now, no chastening for the present, present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised there. Okay? Okay? So, we can joy in God's correction and be happy in that correction. Why? Because in the beginning, God, it starts that we are His children. Okay? Hence, joy in His correction upon us as a father. Hence, we can be happy in that. Do you get it? Do you get it? Okay? That's it's actually very simple. But see, see they, they, they mixing and blending things together. Getting rid of distinction. Words are important. Words have meaning. Things that are different, <laughs> they're not the same. Okay? Now, back to Psalm 30. Let's finish this up. Let's read verse 5 again. For his anger endureth but for a, mo but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. And why is that? Why is that? Verse 4. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. His holiness. Other than. See, that's what makes grace so much more beautiful to behold. That he who is other, holy, extends grace, unmerited favor unto you. And then you got these devils out there who cheapen God's grace. Be offended at those people who cheapen God's grace. The devils. You know who you are. You cheap grace believers. You cheapen something that means everything. And you have no idea of what it actually is yourself. And of course, Psalm 51 had to come here had to come here. See, are you getting it? That we are to have joy in the Lord at the remembrance of His holiness, that He is who He is. Not just merely what He gives. Okay? We are to joy in His salvation. Yes, we are. Who is our salvation? Jesus. 
See, so many have you focus on the outer adornments rather than the one who is giving the adornments. That's why we are focusing so heavily on this. Because at this time, they want you to focus on what? The, the stuff, man. Who's giving you the stuff? <laughs> okay. Psalm 51, verses 7 on to verse 12. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. <laughs> the bones that thou hast broken may rejoice. Like, thank you, Lord, that I'm yours, and that you have corrected me. Okay? Okay. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Dispensational difference, have to mention this. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And during this time, during under the law, eternal security, that seal was not there, dear brethren, dear friend. Okay? Today we are sealed. So our joy is unspeakable because we have God living within us. Okay? Okay? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. You get out of fellowship your joy? Oh, you'll have joy that to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. Once saved, always saved. Yes, but your joy can be hampered. Your joy can't be hampered. Why? <laughs> yes, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. <laughs> okay? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And if you're, uh, what is the joy of our salvation? Who is our salvation? John 11. John 11. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> um, is, is salvation just like, like this? Something that you... A possession. Okay? Is salvation a possession? Salvation, it is a gift, but is salvation a person? Is salvation our Lord Jesus Christ? Mm. Oh wow! Huh? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's cut out. Let's cut the meat off that flank, huh? How many to you is salvation a mere possession? Like, like the, the, the commandment thing, that uh, the, the commandments, like the constitution thing. I, that's a possession of mine. Do you possess salvation? It's a gift. And if you are of the church of the living God, you are sealed until the day of redemption. You have God within you. God cannot deny himself. What truly is salvation? John chapter 11, verses 23 on to verse 26. <laughs> story of Lazarus, okay? Now check this out. You know, what was this? Martha was like, oh Lord, if you had been here, uh, Lazarus, my brother wouldn't have died, you know. And the one verse that everybody can know in scripture, Jesus wept, okay? Uh, let's read verses 21 on to verse 26 here. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast, hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Look at how Martha responds. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the, of, at the last days. Like, I know that, Lord. I know. I know. Okay. So, yeah, exactly. She knew that. But look at now how Jesus responds to her. 
Jesus said unto her, I am, I am, get to your little pen, circle, in the book of John, it would do you good to circle all the I am's, okay? Circle, then put your little circle around the I am, okay? I am the resurrection, the resurrection, the redemption of the purchased possession, our salvation, okay? And the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Never die. Believest thou this? I am the resurrection? Okay? You and I were saved, but we're not redeemed. He is the resurrection. Our salvation will can be complete when we are whoop, redeemed absent from the body to be present with the Lord. Okay? <laughs> In a way, I guess when you die, it's kind of a redemption, isn't it? Because you die, you're going to be with the Lord. But if those of us who are alive and remain, when you know, you know, we get caught up. Okay? We're, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus right now. But our soul and our spirit are here housed in the skin suit down here on earth. Okay, so whether we die, we'll go to be with him. Okay, we'll be with the Lord. But if we are caught up, okay, you get it? I am the resurrection. Okay, who he is. Okay, and of course, come on, John chapter 14. John chapter 14, of course, of course. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 5 and 7. On to verse 7, excuse me. <laughs> Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we not we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know thee way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. <laughs> Jesus is the father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The, 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 I am the resurrection. <laughs> Jesus Christ is our salvation, dear friends. It is him himself. Okay? It is a gift. It's, a, it's, it's not a possession. Okay? We don't possess the Lord. The Lord possesses us. He has us. We are his. We belong unto him. He cannot deny himself. Okay? <laughs> but see, that mentality of looking at the outer adornment rather than worshiping Lord, the Lord for who he actually is. He is our salvation. He is our salvation. Like a brother left one of the comments, you know, I'm not even going to presume to know what's best for me in my life. I mean, we can know, absolutely, because we have the scriptures, but God first. God knows what's best. Well, how do you know? Because it's written. It is written. It is written. Okay. He is first in all things. Yes, brethren. Yes, brethren. Do you love him for who he is? If you love him for who he is, then truly, truly, the fact of what he gives, which is himself, becomes that much more greater. And see, you devils out there, you cheapen all that, man. You cheapen it. Okay, Deuteron uh, Deuteronomy, Revelation chapter 22, uh, verses 12 on to verse 16. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. That's what Alpha and Omega mean. The first and the last. Ditto. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to 
the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and uh, murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, king, and the bright and morning star, not son of the morning. Okay? And you read a Bible, like the NIV, morning star is in Isaiah. Okay? They say that Jesus fell from heaven. Okay. Okay? Jesus is our salvation. God is our salvation. Not just a mere possession. Okay? Okay. You've heard me say to you, it's, you can't lose your salvation. It's not yours to lose. Okay? It is not a possession that you possess. He has you. He has you. Okay? You, you are sealed. Okay? Yes, the Lord lives within you. Okay? You are his property. But he has you. You, you are his property. Yes. You have him in the sense that he is in you and you are sealed. But he has you. He has you. Or does he? Or does he? Okay? Now, Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs have chapters. Proverbs chapter 12. Mm. Oh, might have to, might have to skip, a, skip a few of these. Might have to. Only got three hours. <laughs> so, Proverbs chapter 12, verses 17 on to verse 20. He that speaketh truth sheweth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise who fear the Lord is health. Okay, what are, on to verse 20, okay. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine, imagine evil. Okay? Aha! Gotcha! Oh! Oh! Let's see if we can get dirt on so-and-so. Yeah. But to the counselors of peace is joy. And again, who is our peace? Is peace like a t-shirt you can put on and then take off? No. Who is our peace? He is our peace. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And of this, of course, of course, Isaiah chapter 52. Not Lamentations. Oh, excuse me. Isaiah chapter 52. I don't expect this to make sense to some of you because you're not saved. Okay? <laughs> you're not saved. I don't think you're going to get this. I'm pretty sure you're not going to get it. Okay? Isaiah chapter 52, verses 7 and 8. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth Peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Brother, what are you waiting for? Seek the Lord and he will answer you. But we have been praying about you, uh, for you on that for quite some time. And may you be that voice in the wilderness unto your own people, brother, in his time. You have our support. Romans chapter 10. You know who you are. You know who you are. I'm not going to name you publicly on that one. Not yet. Okay. Spare you the assaults of these devils. Romans chapter 10, verses 11, oh, on to verse 15. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Of course, 
How do you arrive onto that belief? I'll, in the description box will be, let us reason together, okay? For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You come onto that belief through brokenness of your self-righteousness, godly sorrow, contrition, it's your fault, and fear of the Lord, you're going to hell unless you unless he save you. And in fear of the Lord, you call upon him and he save you, okay? For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek in salvation, okay? For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Brother? Brother? I'm not saying, I'm just saying, brother. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, that bring glad tidings of good things. Unless they be sent. Oh, sent by a Bible college. Sent by men. No. Apostolos. Sent one. Okay. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. We gotta gotta include this. Gotta include this. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. <laughs> Who sends? Okay? We can joy in the we are we are to joy in the Lord, that we are his children, that he is our Lord, our God, our Father, our King. We are to joy in that we are his children, that he corrects us as children. And then being sent, okay? We are to be having joy that we are his and that he sends us. And we, are, we can be happy in our service, but we joy first in that he sends us. Luke chapter 10, verses 17 on to verse 20. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. <laughs> Look at how many people got saved because of what I did. Look at how many people have been helped out because of me, of what I've done. Yeah, look at how many people I brought to the Lord. I feel like Paul for all the people I brought to the Lord. Shut up. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. <laughs> Again, talk about, is there, yeah, there it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, who fell from heaven? Uh, that would be Lucifer, the son of the morning. As lightning, bright, okay? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We'll get to that. Verse 20. Look at verse 20. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. I feel like Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord or who have, who have been helped and come to Christ through what I've done. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Let's see what happens? They, they put their attention on the outward, not on the inward. <laughs> who, who are the real heretics? I wonder. I wonder. Matthew chapter 16. Okay? And then, don't be, you know, rejoice not that the, the devils are subject unto you. Okay? Don't rejoice in that. But that your names are written in heaven. And hey, I've given you power 
to tread over scorpions, and nothing that men can do will hurt you. But well, well, what about this? Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 on to verse 16. Uh, 13 on to verse 16. Uh, am I, is that the right one? Matthew 16. <laughs> Matthew 16, beg your pardon. Verses 13 on to verse 16, okay? Now, who do men say that he is? Okay? Who do men, who do you say that Jesus is? He's God the Father, okay? But what is he to you? Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 on to verse 16. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say, Thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Now, this, this, this is not talking about relativism, okay? That, well, Jesus is this to you, this is, he is this to me. This is not talking about relativism, okay? Okay? Who is he to you? Is he God or just a prophet? Hmm? Is he God or a good master? Huh? Is he God? Is he your father? Is he your king? Or just a mere provider for you? Those things come, yes. But what is he to you first? Okay? And Shimon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay? And But with that, go to John chapter 6. Okay? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yeah! Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, okay, yeah, sure does. Amen. That's truth. Amen. But follow it up with this. John Chapter 6, verse, verses 66 on to verse 71. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done this, that, and this, and this? You, have we not done this? Depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I never knew you. From that time, uh, verses 66 on to the close of the chapter in John chapter 6, Okay. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Shimon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. What, what, where, what, what else are you going to do? What are you going to, where, where are we to go? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You're it. You're the only way. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the resurrection. What What else is there? Oh, man's petty kingdom? Religion? Philosophy? Hmm? Books of men? Yourself? <laughs> yes, thou art the Son of the Son of God. Thou art the Christ, the anointed one, yes, the blessed of the Lord, yes. Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord. Then Shimon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You're the only way. You are it. See, I am the way, the truth, and the life is a statement of exclusivity. Excludes everything. Including yourself. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have I not chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. <laughs> He spake, stop it, stop it. He spake of Judas Iscariot. I wanted to subtract that name and put someone else's name in there, but I'm not. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Uh, yeah, isn't that something? 
Isn't that something? Go now to Ecclesiastes chapter 2. One second, brethren. All right, I had to write some things down before I forgot them. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Those of you who will see this, um, this is this is what's going to be going on for the whole day. So if I do not get a hold of you today, this is why. Okay, this is just part of this part. Still got to do the other one. Ecclesiastes chapter two, one on to verse eleven. Okay, let's really drive home this point of keeping your focus. Your joy is in who God is. And, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek ye first him, and all this stuff will be given. Seek him first. Your joy comes before being happy. Okay? Like I said, you can have joy and not be happy. Are you happy during when you're being chastised? No. Okay. You can be happy with all this worldly stuff, but you have no joy. Ecclesiastes 2, 1 on 2, verse 11. Here's someone who really understood the vanity of worldly things. The vanity of ascribing onto religion and calling that the thing in and of itself. Okay? I said in mine heart, go to now. I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. And behold, this also is vanity. <laughs> yeah, it's fleeting. I said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what doeth it? Yeah, because it's here today, psh, gone tomorrow. I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. He gave himself over to wine, but yet acquainted his heart with wisdom, trying to play the balancing act of walking both sides. Hey, King Solomon, if he couldn't do it, what makes you think you can? <laughs> uh, I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. You feel like Paul, don't you? Yeah, don't hurt, don't hurt yourself by patting yourself on the back there, hotshot. Okay, uh, yeah, I may, I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house who do your dirty work. Yeah. <laughs> also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold. Oh boy, oh yeah. No, I gathered, but yet the Lord gave it to him. But Solomon also gathered himself. Could it be possible that Solomon went above and beyond what the Lord allotted him in riches? Oh gee, wow, what a concept. See, the Lord gave Solomon riches. We, I think we covered this in the previous video, but see, uh, Solomon went a little bit beyond and above what the Lord allotted him. Okay? Another time that 666 appears in Scripture is the weight of gold that Solomon got in one year. You tell me! Okay? <laughs> yeah. I got me men singers and women singers to praise him for everything that he is and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments, and that of all sorts. So I was great, ain't ya? Yeah, bravo. Take a bow. Yeah, bravo. Bravo. Good for you. Bravo. Yes. Bravo. Aren't you so proud of yourself? Yeah. Yeah. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. Okay. Whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. We've been looking at like our joy is supposed to be on the Lord, but from any joy? 
Solomon, look, look at the, did you, were you reading along with me? What was Solomon just listing off? What I did? I, 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 I. So he was, got confused. <laughs> Happiness with joy. He was, these were joys unto him when his joy ought to have been primarily, primarily the Lord. And look what happened to Solomon. We did address this in the previous video, okay? See, his joy was in the worldly things. But yet his wisdom remained with him. See, what does that mean? He figured it out. He understood, okay? And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands, that he had done, had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. And there was no profit, profit under the sun. You know, you really need to ingest, glean Ecclesiastes quite often, dear friends. It's, it's very humbling because someone who had been there, done that, and had gotten the best of all things. Yeah, yeah. Now see, he withheld not his heart from any joy. And he loved many strange women. See, Solomon's heart got turned away from him because of the strange women. And then he was starting to put joy in worldly things, confusing happiness with joy, making them one and the same when they are different. Because why? His joy wasn't first in the Lord that had gone away from him because he went after the flesh. We are to remember in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and verse 7. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. Hmm. They joy before thee according to the joy and harvest because of the abundance of the stuff. But where was the joy in the one who gave the provision for that harvest? Hmm. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil, thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel for fire. Where are joys supposed to lie? Right here. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince, the Prince of peace of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this so Solomon got fixated on the outer but within his joy was not in who? The Lord. He started out good, but what happened? Things went to his head. <laughs> Verses 13 and verse 17 here in Isaiah chapter 9. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth him, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore, see, when someone gets so uh, full of themselves, so well off in their blessings that they're doing good, they take their eyes off the Lord and they look to worldly means 
And usually they have to go through a Jonah experience in order to get their focus back onto the Lord. I pray that that doesn't happen to some of you who are of the Church of the Living God and just messed up or something, that you have to go through something like Jonah went through to get your focus right. More on that in another video in the future, near future, okay? But let's continue, okay? Therefore, the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush, and one day, the ancient and the honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore, the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows, for everyone is an hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Hmm. Very serious warning when you do not have your joy placed where it ought to be in the Lord, that you are his and that he dwells within you. Okay? Go now to Matthew chapter 13. Still, technically, the law was still in place. They were still under the law. So, doctrinally, still under the Old Testament, uh, under the law, in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 on to verse 23. <laughs> Hear ye, therefore, the parable of the sower. Ooh. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, Satan, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Verse 21, joy, he receives it. Joy in that in and of itself, but, 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 yet hath he no root in himself. What root is in you? Root of bitterness? Root of Sodom? Or he is divine? We are the branches? You get that, don't you? I know you do. Yeah. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, and when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches. <laughs> Choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Oh, not unfruitful unto himself. Oh, surely not. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, we want verses 20 under verse 26. Again, under the law, before the death, death, burial, and resurrection. I think thus far you're getting what it means to have joy according to Scripture. I, I, I hope so. This is actually pretty simple. Luke chapter 6, verses 20 on to verse 26. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor. Remember, poor does not always denote not having any of this. Okay? Remember that. For yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you. And when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake, rejoice ye in that day and leap 
for joy. Why? For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Their rock is not as our rock, our enemies therefore being witnesses unto themselves. Hmm. Unto them he is evil spoken of, but on you, unto you he is glorified. Why? Because you're doing what the Lord would have you to do and you are suffering for his name's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets, but woe unto you that are rich. For ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you, when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Uh, only those who are of the church of the living God speak against people like Billy Graham. But isn't it interesting like how many people really spoke well of Billy Graham? Yeah, yeah, just just wanted to uh, bring that up, okay? Just had to bring that up. Now go to Luke chapter 15, another thing to joy in, okay? So we can joy in persecution because today, after the death, burial, and resurrection, we are, we are sealed unto the day of redemption. We, have, we can be happy that we are being put to service for our Lord, but our joy is that he is within us. Therefore, when all who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, we will joy because Christ is in us. You see the difference, okay? Luke chapter 13, uh, 15. Luke chapter 15. Another thing to joy in. Luke chapter 15, verses 3 on to verse 10. And he spake this parable unto them, saying... What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that believe, oh, repent, repenteth. Oh, no, remember, repenteth means belief. Yea, has God said, huh? Yeah, yeah. Watch out for people like that, brethren. Yeah. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Oh, no, but remember, yeah, repenteth actually means believe. <laughs> Watch out for people who pull a yea hath God said right in front of your face. Beware of devils who do that. Beware. Yea hath God said right in front of you. Beware. Beware. Okay? Beware. Oh, and uh, on that, Repentance. Uh, Luke 13, verses 2 and verse 5. And Jesus said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Unless ye repent. 
Turn from yourself. Yes, repentance is a turning. Yes. What are you turning away from? The devils. Thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. What are you turning from? Sin? You couldn't do that if you tried. What are you turning away from? Yourself. Or those 18. Oh, excuse me. Verse 3 again. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. You're repenting of yourself. You're turning from yourself unto the Lord. Hence, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hmm. Very interesting. John chapter 15. <laughs> John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We're almost done with this video. Well, like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record the other part, but upload it tomorrow. Okay? So, John chapter 15. Verses 4 on to verse 11. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. See. He, he dwells within us, yes. He dwells within us. You know that, uh, that hymn, He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. Okay? Yes? We are to walk with him. He walks with us in the fact that he, he is within us, so wherever we go, he goes with us. With us. That's why you got to mind where your feet are taking you. Okay? But, okay, we are to abide in him. Can any, can you do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Boop, no, you cannot. Okay? That's what Romans 7 is about. And uh, uh, Romans 7, I'll, I'll put the, put that in the description box as well. Okay? So, but let's continue. Okay? Verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and, with, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Now, nothing is going to separate us from the love of Christ, but for us today in this dispensation, uh, you, don't, you decide not to walk according to the word? You're going to go to heaven when you die. But your joy is going to be soiled. You're not, you'll have joy knowing that, hey, once I'm out of here, I'm going to be with the Lord. But what, what is the extent of that joy, even though you will have it? Not being obedient unto the scriptures. Knowing that, yeah, you're going to go to heaven no matter what. Yes, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. But does, again, doesn't his honor mean anything to you? I really question so many, not those who I am in close contact with, but I really question what the honor of the Lord means unto so many. I really do. I really do. <laughs> I really do. And you know what? Um, a little confessing of a fault. By my example in the past of letting my temper get the best of me, my fault, no excuse, and letting ultra-aggressive words come out of my mouth, I was beginning to look like some of them. I'm not like them. 
Not at all. Nor do I want to be. But see, God's love is there because he cannot deny himself. But if you're going to walk contrary to scripture and make your life a miserable mess, number one, you're happy. <laughs> yeah, happy. But that joy, you'll have joy still, yes. But that joy and fellowship with our Lord is not going to be there. You'll, you'll be just joying in the fact that you'll be able to get out of here and be with the Lord. But while living in sin, as the church of the living God, that joy is there, yes, but tainted. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. My joy remain in you. Okay? More a little bit on this joy about, you know, when one of the church of the living God, you're once saved, always saved. Um, uh, I did uh, uh, something, I just wrote it down, a uh, two-part video, I think it was about complaining or something, I forget, but you come to the Lord on His terms, broken and contrite and in fear of the Lord, call upon His name and He save you, you are saved, born again, converted, okay? You are a new creature, okay? You're going to go to heaven, whether you like it or not. Why you wouldn't like that, I don't know. But you're once saved, always saved, okay? But God is not forcing you at gunpoint to walk according to His statutes, to walk according to His precepts. He's not, okay? You can, as the church of the living God, make your life a miserable hell! <laughs> you really can. And dragging our Lord through the mud while you're doing it. And you go, well, I get to get out of here and go with the Lord. Yes, you do. But he's going to be ashamed of you for eternity. You're going to be in heaven. Yes, you are. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, you want the Lord to be ashamed of you for all eternity. Even though because of his promise, his grace, that seal, he cannot deny himself. He's got to let you in because of that. He doesn't have to, but he does, or else he would be a liar, right? Once they always say, hey, even the easy believers and devils, they rub that in your face. But then again, they're, 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 never mind them. They're, they're evil, okay? Hebrews, chapter 12 again. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 3. Wherefore my joy remain in you? See, Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. Okay? God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Okay? He fulfilled what man could never do. Okay? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run the, with patience the race that is set before us. Time of Jacob's trouble epistle, run the race that is set before us with patience, knowing that they have to endure to the end for the time of Jacob's trouble, not today, okay? But let's continue. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds what does that mean God never sinned God cannot sin okay but see, God manifests in the flesh. Okay, this is very hard for you lost people to get. I understand that. But God manifests in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That flesh itself was sinful. And that flesh is what was tempted, not God. Okay? Okay? Are you with me with that? But see, the joy that was set before him. What is that talking about? Okay? The joy that was set before him. What is that talking about? Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 
okay? Look at that verse again, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The joy that was set before him. What is that joy? What joy was it? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Come on, come on. 17 on verse 21. You know this pretty well by now, don't you? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That reconcilement, that joy that's set before him. Now, you know, like I mentioned in the previous video, y'all can Ezekiel 18 me till you're blue in the face. Ezekiel 18, yes, God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that he, what? Repents. Turn from himself unto the Lord with a broken, contrite heart. Okay? And in fear of the Lord, call upon his name. Okay? Yes, God delighteth in mercy. But not everybody's going to be saved. Okay? God's salvation is there for everybody to have. But not everybody's going to come to him on his terms. See? But see, that joy that was set before him was what? To wit, that God was in Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh, okay? To wit, God was in Christ. God was in the anointed one, okay? Reconciling the world unto himself. That reconciliation. God doesn't want any to uh, perish, but that all might come to, rep uh, to repentance, okay? Not everybody is going to. But see, that reconcilement, that is what he was joying in. Reconciling his people. Okay? The Jews. Making atonement for sin. But that we have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay? That is the joy that was set before him. That what? To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's, that was the joy that was set before him. Okay? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Here's our source of joy. Imputed righteousness. Who knew no sin. Jesus never sinned. Yeah, see this? Hey, okay. You nitwit up there. Uh, Jesus never sinned. Okay? Okay? You see that? Okay? Good. Good. Yeah, drink some coffee, by the way. You're looking a little peaked, okay? For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's the joy that was set before him. Okay. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. We're almost done. Almost done with this video. Then I'm going to take a break, do the other video, and then upload this one. This one is going to be, we started at what? Uh, nine something? <laughs> nine, ten. Wow. Wow. Time really flies. It's only not even noon yet. Wow. But John chapter 16, verses 20 on to verse 28. And praise the Lord, didn't have to cut anything out of this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall, sorrow, shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour has come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. 
and ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Uh, about verse 22, hold your place here, Matthew chapter 10. This is what I thought I had written down earlier, but that's why it sounded a little off when I uh, made reference to, oh, I forget where it was, Matthew 16. But Matthew chapter 10, this is what I was th uh, thinking about. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able, isn't saying that he's going to, able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Like I told you before, verse 28, the soul nihilists uh, say, see, he'll destroy your soul in hell. No, he's able to do so. Uh, but there's way too many scriptures to counteract that. Uh, no, your soul is going to be in hell, the lake of fire burning forever in the presence of the Lamb. Okay? This soul annihilationism, which... Um, uh, Bullinger taught, blah, that's heresy, okay? And this is one of their go-to verses. But, and fear not them which kill the body. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. You know, Paul was whooped and beaten and scarred. The, it wasn't that they were trying to whip him per se, they were trying to whip Christ out of him. See, these fakes, these devils, they can attack you to try to whip Christ out of you, brethren, but they can't. They can't. They can whip your body. You know, Jesuits, they'll kill you. They'll go after your parents and stuff like that, unfortunately, because the Jesuits never forgive nor forsake. Okay? That's what the Jesuits do. Okay? But after that, they... All they can do is kill the body. They can't kill the soul. And your joy no man taketh from you. And with the times that are going to be coming upon all of us, you know, let him take all. But praise you, Lord, that you are coming to your kingdom. Praise you, Lord, that you are glorified in this. Though the weeds be wrapped around my head. Jonah chapter 2 Lord is, uh, Lord willing, of course, leading on something to do a uh, video on that here in the near future. Very, very good. Very good. But, you know, no man can steal your joy from you. Your sin, you can hamper your joy. You can um, stain that joy in you. Yes, taint it, but it cannot be taken away from you. Why? Because the Lord abides in you. Take comfort in that. As all the world is going to hell in a handbasket about you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, asking ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall shew you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. To be absent from the body, present with the Lord. John chapter 17, 11 on to verse uh, what is it, 18. The true Lord's Prayer, John 17, 17. Well, not that's that, of course. We're going to read that, of course. But John 17, this is truly the Lord's Prayer. Okay? John 17, verses 11 on to verse 18. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. 
While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Now I come, now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world. That they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. That joy in ourselves. Setting, uh, look, going and doing the race that is set before us. Okay? Being ministers of reconciliation. That we have the Lord in us. That is our joy. And we can be happy in service. Therefore we rejoice that number one, we are being used of the Lord. But number two, and more far and more so, that our names are written in heaven. Okay? And now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, Thy word is truth. And what is truth? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you very much. Even thou, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And herein, our joy, the joy that is set before us. Okay. Aha, I see you, brother. When you, when you watch this video, you'll see. Okay, you'll see. You'll know. <laughs> but um, our joy is that we are belonging, that we belong to the Lord and that he sends us out and we can be happy in service unto him. Joy. Where is your joy? Hmm? Are you confusing joy with happiness? Is your joy in the things of the world? Confusing it with happiness? Yeah, you can have joy of the things that he gives you, yes. But see, things that are different are not the same. There are aspects of joy within happiness. There are aspects of happiness within joy. But the two are different. Because joy stems first from being one with the Lord because he dwells within you. And that is our joy. And when we have that joy, hence happy are we. Who's God? Who's who has the God of Jacob as their God. Happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Why? Because he dwells within you. See? Now, that was the look of joy. Granted, that was <laughs> hardly all the words, appearances of joy. But true joy, true joy, even for you lost people, True joy stems from one place, from one being, our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ, who is also our God, our Lord, and our King. Also happens to be a Father. Okay? So our joy begins, starts, has its root in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is our salvation, who is our joy, who is our God, who is our King, who is our Lord, who is our Father, who is our liberty. It's Jesus Christ. That is our joy. He is our joy. What's joy to you? That's going to be it for this video. Like I said, um, this, Lord willing, will be uploaded today, later, because now it's 12.05. I'm going to do the part two of this. So when you see this on the first, know that the part two of this video was recorded today on the 28th, but I've, you know, to upload this first and then part two second, okay? Why am I doing it like that? You know, when you have videos, a two-parter, and this is the way it is, um, the one is watched more than the other, and... I've done the uh, two-parters in the same day, and you've seen it. 
I want to try this because these are both equally important and I believe equally deserve your full attention. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you to all you brethren. Brethren, do pray for one another. If you have time, I've actually been very, very busy. We have been very, very busy. Thank you to you and young man. Um, I will return your email. Uh, probably not today because, um, you know, praise the Lord doing what he would have me to do today. Uh, I, I have received your email. Thank you. Thank you. I will speak with you later, uh, Lord willing, if you will speak with me. Um, brethren, pray for one another. You know, if you have a, a, a brother's email, shoot them an email. At least say hello. Say, I'm praying for you, brother. I love you. Converse with one another. Pray for one another. Be there for one another. And keep each other in prayer. Don't be afraid to com communicate and converse with others. Okay? Don't. Be afraid to do that. Do that. Reach out. Speak unto your brother or your sister. Keep us in your prayers also. So, thank you, brethren. We love you. And we will see you in the next video. Okay?